Oh, okay. I think you can hear me now. Hi, thank you for joining our last talk of today. This talk started with a, com a rather painful conversation we were having internally at Adyen, which one of my colleagues said, hmm, you'll never get the devs to understand all this. And after the meeting, me and Dirk were chatting. We were saying, well, it's important they do understand all this. Uh, and what we're doing is we're very much focusing on the core uh, principles and we've simplified a lot of it so there's no complex terminology it's just like where the data is and where the data is not we're going to look at uh, standalone databases and two types of replication so uh, should we go to the next slide oh I thought I can say something as well fun excellent, excellent. <laughs> uh, our plan was uh, make it fun and make it very clear and visible where data is and where not and what the trade-offs of the system are and uh, I think we managed pretty well, actually. Yep, so, so right. positive feedback so far. All right, this one, for you. Okay, so I'm Dave Pitts, um, and uh, I've, I'm now based in Adyen in Spain, so I'm very interested in getting the Postgres user groups up and running again in Barcelona and in Madrid. So also, I like with my husband doing music, so there's a logo there for the Thomas Dave uh, Postgres EU song. So I've had some nice feedback about it. It's on Spotify. Okay. And I, Dirk, I think you like chess. I like chess. Uh, I'm just looking for an excuse to play a lot of people. Uh, so that's why I go to conferences. And downside is I have to have talks like this. Uh, but this uh, this event is kind of special. We have an official tournament where we keep track of the scores uh, of the games played. You can post them in the uh, Telegram channel. And we have some nice prizes in the end. So please play a lot of chess. Oh, and I work for Atian, of course. Oh. But way more fun. Let's let's talk about databases. Indeed. Let's start with a with some concepts, maybe. Yes. So I think you're going to start talking about the sorts of conversations we need to have with devs. They need to understand things like planned switchovers, failovers, RPO, RTO. So if you can start with those sort of those sort of painful conversations we have with devs. Right. Well, actually, it's very simple. We have kind of a primary database, which is receiving read and write traffic. And then we have a number of replicas where you can only do read operations. And every now and then we have to do maintenance on the server, which is currently the primary. So we have to switch between primary and replica. And when it's planned, we call it a failover. And when it's unplanned, no, when it's planned, it's a switchover. And when it's unexpected, we call it a failover. A switchover yeah. are easy. Uh, we are involved, we are setting up in time, and should be smooth. Usually it is. Uh, a failover might come anywhere out of the blue sky. Uh, we are unprepared for it, except for our skill set, but we manage. Uh, and when it comes to a database failure, the devs are usually interested in RPO, the recovery point objective. Basically, did we lose any data or not? And the recovery time objective, which is how long was the database not available for the application? Thank you. So those are the devs need to talk about think about RPO, RTO, uh, switchovers, failovers. There's three more concepts I want to quickly introduce. Uh, so in terms of the physical database, uh, I spent my whole career working with Oracle and then Postgres. You know, there are two really important big blocks of data. There's the transaction logs, the wall, which are written to sequentially really, really fast. And then there's the heap. Uh, which is the rest of the data, which is sitting on data files in an unordered way. And in the old days, unordered uh, reads and writes were very slow because the disk had to move. And that still influences the design we have nowadays, even though it's faster with SSDs. But as these transactions are coming in, they're written really, really fast to the wall logs. And we have copies of the information in memory. And periodically, that information is flushed to uh, to physical disk at checkpoint operations. My experience is developers are largely unaware of checkpoints because they don't they occur in the background. And up until Postgres 14 or 15, log checkpoint was turned off well, by default. That's now on. So developers will at least see it in the Postgres log. But of course, on the developer laptop, it's very fast because they have almost no data change. But checkpoint is a key part of this process for today. So wall, heap, and checkpoint. Right. I would say enough talking. Let's have mm -hmm. some fun. Cool. Uh, I created very quickly an application, and we are processing some love here. I have some nice hearts. 
I'm the application server sending it to my database server, Dave. Okay, so I need to process this two of hearts for me. Two of the hearts, do first it? thing, first piece of data I need to process. So the thing is, I have it in memory, that means it's holding my hand. Um, if it goes in this box, I have a copy here on the back. This is a duplicate of so the two of hearts now goes in the wall. Because it's going in sequentially, it's super fast. For the moment, there's no copy in the heap, it's just in memory. Okay. So that was the first card played. Okay. All right, can you uh, have some more? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, okay. All right. Space in memory? Sure, yes. So plenty of space in memory. And straight away, I put the trans a copy of the transaction, the three of hearts, in the wall. Commit. So as soon as I'm commit, I've been ready for the next transaction. What if I give you two cards at one and commit once? Is that yeah, possible? Yeah, definitely it's possible. All right, so two transactions. And we have the four and the five. So take the four off the back, write that to the wall at the speed of light, and then write the five of hearts at the speed of light to the wall, and everything's good, and we're running very smoothly. All right, but uh, how do we get the cards to the, uh, to the bigger box? Okay, so periodically the database says, Ooh, there's a lot of dirty pages. You'll hear the term dirty pages. Dirty pages means the stuff in memory is up to date, but the stuff on disk is, hasn't been written. Uh, and if you have too much dirty pages, it makes recovery very slow, as we'll demo right. later. Oh, but let's fix it. I'm going to do a checkpoint operation, and then I take the two of hearts, and I do a long, slow, sequitous read going around the room because this is I.O. unordered. Unfortunately, I don't have a very big box, but again, the three of hearts is a slow write, and the four and the five go into, uh, they've been written to the heap, and the checkpoint is complete. All right. Okay. Safe for process. I would say it takes pretty a long time, to be honest. Well, it takes a long time to explain, but this is all going around on in the background. So, uh, so nobody cares. Typically, no. Uh, uh, unless checkpoint starts hanging, but that's another story. All right. If nobody cares, I'm okay. good. Okay. Six and seven. Starts. Okay. Committed to the wall, and then committed to the wall, and then... more cards. You have more cards. I have way more. Actually, I've 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 multiple cards. Okay, so I'm just putting all these to the wall. Here, you can do so, it one commit. That's fine. Okay. So now we have this database doing all the background stuff, right? Maybe, maybe a checkpoint operation, maybe something else, or it's just ordering cards and being. Okay. Writing stuff to the wall file. And I'm just always scared that something happens to the database and suddenly we lose it. Dave, Dave, yeah. Dave, yeah. Dave, can I have more cards? What happened? Okay. Dave, Dave, I want to process cards. Okay, where am I? Okay. Can I, I think can we have more cards? I think we had an out of memory error. Okay, let me have a look. So, what have I lost? He's out of memory. Okay, I'm out of memory. Who would have guessed? Yeah, so I'm going back. Now, the last checkpoint operation, we actually write this to a control file. So, And I can see from the wall log, I need to reprocess the six. Dave, can, seven, I the, can I play the jack of the four? eight? One moment. The yeah, nine, one moment, one moment. And the ten. So they're back. They've been processed. I shall write them to the heap as well. And now I'm ready to process again. You're ready to process again? Yes. So. It's like minutes. Uh, I, I, I'm trying to process cards here. Well, we should do checkpoint more often. Yeah, we should checkpoint more often. Why do you not checkpoint more often? Well, I didn't know we were about to go down. Yeah, well, I didn't tell you. Okay. That gets all the fun out of this. Okay. But uh, just to be sure, uh, RTO, the recovery time objective, I would say not up to, up to the bar. Yeah. Uh, but did you lose data? No. No, zero data loss. So RPO, zero. Okay, so that's the good thing. We didn't lose any data. It just took a long time. So, uh, Dave, can you fix this? Um, right, so I think we should advance the slide, by the way. Um, ah, so, maybe more than one slide. Okay, well, that's what we were just discussing, by the way. So, standalone, one primary, zero replicas. And I always I, think this is a slide three presentation, and I'm waiting yeah. to wait for Okay, Sorry. so after standalone, the first thing we want to do is add a replica. So let's talk about asynchronous replicas. Um, so we've got one primary, uh, and then we've got certain amounts of replicas in a, running in asynchronous mode. Okay. So, so you can be the database again. Yes. Uh, I can be the second database. Yep. I, I can guess. listen to you. Indeed. Uh, but we then we hats. need a new application. Yeah, I've got hats. Okay. We've got a red hat for being primary database. Okay. I'm the primary. Blue hat. 
I'm the replica. I will only listen to Dave. Okay. So, uh, so now we are only a application short. Okay, so who's going to play the application? I don't know. I think we need a volunteer to be the application. Ah, we have Excellent. a volunteer. Thank Excellent. you very much. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Gabriella, if I remember correctly. Yes. All right. Uh, you're our new application. Uh, you can just uh, hand out the data to Dave. Okay, so let's... Let's switch uh, no. positions here. <laughs> Fast. Okay. Fast. I will do my best. Okay. Um, okay. So we will let's play a couple of cards. So, okay. So now uh, we have a replica. So on the back, I have a copy which I'm going to play to the wall log. And I've got also two copies, a double copy to hand to the replica so they can write it to the wall log and uh, eventually to their heap. Okay, so cool. I can do this. I can put this to the to the wall files. Okay. And I keep uh, this one in my pockets for later. Okay. One for me and the double for you. So nice. single in the wall, so that's committed. So uh, just to be sure, when do you commit this to the application? As soon as I've written it to the wall log, um, which is my first thing I do, I write it to the wall log, and then I'm ready for another transaction. Okay. So, and you're... You know, there's another background process. I can do my stuff on my yeah. time. Yeah, indeed. I can handle that. Okay. So the first, like thing I, jobs. first thing I do is I write to the wall and I confirm that I have the transaction. And then I also, in the background, I pass it off to the replica. So can we do two as well? It's not like I'm doing a lot. Maybe we can do multiple transactions. Uh, yep. That's, no, this is the fifth one. Oh, so, okay. Okay. So get ahead of ourselves too far. Okay. So, okay. Okay, cool. Does it have a special meaning? Yeah, uh, just process it. It'll be it fine. Does. Okay, so the Joker. So now in my hand, in memory, I have the two, three, four, and five, and we have the Joker, and the Joker represents a query, and the query is, how many spades do we have? Uh, and I have four spades cards, two, three, four, five. Now that's on the primary, but everyone knows one of the great things about replicas is you can remove query load to them. So. All right, so I have a joker as well. The good thing is I received all of the cards. They are in my wall file, so may I go down, I don't lose any data. But there's a second process, loading the wall files, the received transactions into the, into the heap where the application can actually see it. And I thought I had an easy job, so I only had the two and the three of spades. So if you would query me at this moment, I would say I have only the two and three of spades for you. Okay. So I'm, uh, I will catch up. Okay. So we have we have a lagging replica, unfortunately. Yeah, but okay. I can do stuff in my time. So I think I will I will take a sip of water. Okay, but feel free to, to okay. do stuff. So there's some noise going on. I will put aside these cards for the replica while he's uh, doing something, and let's apply that. That's in the wall log. Take some more. Okay, so now it's getting a little bit risky because I process more cards, Ooh, and my replica is oh. now talking to me again after his uh, tea break. And so here, you might want to catch oh, up with oh, those. Oh, I have more cards. Okay. And then let's have the eight and the nine. This. So. I'm all up. Good. Here's an eight. Oh. And then I think we'll at the nine. Okay, so it's the nine committed. Catch up there. Cool. Okay. Now. Okay. Ooh. Oh, I. Okay. 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 Yes, yes. yes. We hear team. the voice. We hear the voice of Rita, the DBA manager. Um, so but that's our team lead, by the way. So, and we have to do a switch over. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Which I really like because I like to be in charge. So um, I'm not complaining. <laughs> so what do we do? We know it's coming. She so wants to do it right now. But okay. Can we do this? So can we make this as smooth as we can? The first thing, because we're going to be stopping and starting, is we will do a checkpoint operation. So I then take all my cards, and which are in memory, and I make sure they are on the primary. We do a checkpoint, and then on the replica. Oh yeah, I can also catch up. Pretty good. Okay, and then I think we're ready for the switch. I think we're ready. Rita, we are ready. 
Okay, we're switching. Yeah, let's okay. switch. Switch, and we switch hats. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And uh, okay, now Dirk is the. Are we switching data centers? Yeah, I think so. Okay, we're switching yeah, data centers. The, we the primary boxes. Yeah. So makes okay. life easier. So uh, Dave, uh, you've been the primary for a while. Yep. Uh, I think this is a moment to take a breath, relax a bit, maybe. A greater operating system. I do have those spread. security patches which need applying and kernel things and whatever. Um, okay, so. Fix it. I can do this. Go. I can handle this. Good later. Yeah, I'm good. No. It's just pretty smooth sailing. Actually, uh, Dave. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, one more patch. I'm just thinking, huh? Mm -hmm. I have all these cards. Okay. And you know nothing about them. Ah. So, uh, if you now go down, that's fine. Yeah. Because I'm doing business with, uh, with Gabriel. But if I go down, I take these cards with me. You know nothing about these cards. And he actually thinks I, I committed this. Okay. I, I know I'm in charge. So now I'm starting to feel uncomfortable. Indeed. What if I lose the data and he bl he starts blaming me? Exactly. Okay. So I think this is suboptimal. Well, the RPO is greater than zero, um, and we don't wish like losing data. Do you mind losing space? Oh, oh no, not at all. Oh, he doesn't okay. mind losing space. The developer doesn't mind losing the data. Okay. We're so good. We're good. <laughs> so if we lose some data, I. I, I have all right, I, I have a trick question for you. Okay. What if we are not processing spades, but we are processing the company diamonds? So that's a different story. Yeah. yeah. What if I lose some diamonds? They're going like, to look up for you, you know? Look after you. I don't like this. Dave, you're the solution guy. How can we fix this? All right. Well, I think we need the next slide. Ah, oh, crap, the slide. Okay. No. Okay. Oh, cool. roll so, back. Roll back on this comment. <laughs> um, so, okay. So the solution is we don't want to lose any data. So we're going to make sure we have synchronous replicas. Synchronous replicas sound great. The data is everywhere. What could possibly go wrong? We're not going to lose any of the company diamonds. So, so I'm not going to be blamed for anything. Well, let's wait and see. Uh, I feel this is like the perfect solution. We're not losing data, quickly recovery. What RPO could go low, wrong? RPO low. Yep. Indeed. Why did we start with this? Uh, well, <laughs> let's play some diamonds. Let's see. play some diamonds. Okay. Wow. All right. I've got some diamonds. Wait, wait. I, I will first talk to Dave. Dave, I've got some diamonds for you. Okay. I have two diamonds written. I'll take one and write it to the uh, wall log. So that's committed. Committed? Committed. I've got two of diamonds. I will never lose them. So do I. Cool. So, Dave, three of diamonds. Three of diamonds going into the wall log. All right, running to the wall log. Okay, excellent. So, did you commit this? Yes. Oh, yeah, Sorry. it's committed. <laughs> I want to be sure. I'm not going to lose company diamonds. Okay. Thank you for that. I think we yes. had a lost packet. I did say committed. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. A four of diamonds. Ooh. Four of diamonds committed. 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 Five of diamonds, Dave. Five of diamonds. Uh, I think that I, I'm, I don't want to be complaining, but it feels a bit slow to me. You should, yeah, should Five of diamonds committed. Dave. I'm not, hurry up. I'm not, I'm not hearing. Dave, I, I feel you're the bottleneck here. You're slowing us down. I we can't are doing hear this him. This. I can't hear him. I think we've got a bad network connection. It's right. not a bad network connection. He's just being lazy. Okay. I'm going to take over. No, no. <laughs> ah, crap. You know <laughs> what? You can do it. Hey, it's enough. It's enough. I'm okay. already done. I'm okay. done. I, I will drop everything I had. You can figure it out. Okay, I'm now the primary. I'm not sure what happened to Dirk. There was a bad network. I heard some noise, but okay. So I'm now the primary and uh, I'm open for taking transactions. So let's take the next transaction. And I take it and I write it to my wall log, but I have a problem. And the problem is I'm in synchronic, synch, 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 synchronous replica 
or sync commit mode. So I need to apply this to a replica. Otherwise, if I disappear, then we would lose the company diamonds, which is not acceptable. So we need a replica. Now, I think there might be a replica in a remote data center. Do you need me? Uh, yes, please. Oh, uh, cool. Good to hear from you again, Doug. I've been sleeping here forever, <laughs> nothing to do. Cool, I can do something. I'm important. Okay. Uh, I'm out of the camera. I don't know how far I need to be in. I think probably the other side of Gabriel. Uh, ah, that's, that's no fun. I think this will do. Okay, good. Are we good? Am well, I inside of the camera or? I don't know. I hope so. Cool. Okay, cool. Hopefully everyone online can see Dirk. Dirk is now in a remote data center and we need, have a problem because yeah, we really want to get the six of diamonds to the remote DC and we need another volunteer to be the network person. We will be nice to the network person, I promise. Nobody please, ever please. network, right? Excellent. So. <laughs> I said we would be nice to the network person. So, so you are Anatoly. Anatoly, excellent. So, if you could take these to the replica, that's fantastic. Okay. Oh, cool. Wait, wait, uh, oh, wait. No. I have something for you. Please tell them I I have this. This is the commit token. Uh, we have the commit token, and we pass all the way back to the application because we are dealing with the company diamonds. So we have a commit. Okay, and now we're ready for the next transaction. And I save that to my wall. And I pass a couple of copies over to the replica. I don't want to spoil the party. He said he would be way faster. I think he's not. Yes, yes, I know. Here. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. And we have a physical commit token because we're dealing with diamonds. And we write that back to the application. And then we get the eight of diamonds. And I take a copy of that. And I pass it to Dirk or the replica. Increasing latency. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Now, don't we? F oh, well, okay. Okay. Maybe let's, wait. let's wait. just wait. So we're now in the sub millisecond time span. And the next thing is we've got another Joker. So very much like the previous Joker, the Joker represents a query. And this time the query is how many diamonds do you have? And I would answer, well, I have all the diamonds up to the six and the seven, but the eight, I still have the confirmation. So I will going to return all the diamonds up to six or seven. Dirk, what will you respond? Oh, I have a handful of diamonds. I've got up to eight. So if you would ask me how many diamonds I have, I have up to eight of diamonds. And we start with the two, so I have seven, seven diamonds here. Seven, and I have, uh, well, I have the two to the seven, so six diamonds. Hey, Dave, that's a bit so, weird. It is a bit weird. How did the replica get to be ahead of the primary? Yeah, well, I just received the eight, and uh, I sent you the confirmation message. Did yeah, but the network, we weren't going to blame the network guy, but he got lost. <laughs> ah, it happens. Okay. I mean, that's always what happens, right? If something goes wrong, you either bl blame the database or the network, and given the fact that we are responsible for, for Databases, we blame the network person. Sorry? It happens. It happens. But it's cool. a bit of a weird situation. Right. So okay. let's fix this. So let's fix this. And we can, in Amsterdam, people were very upset if we didn't close off this final transaction. We had a couple of hecklers. So like we are now writing the eight of diamonds to the application as, with a commit. So everything is now secured. And that is the end of the various tricks and scenarios we're going to, uh, we're going to have. So. Thank you to our two volunteers. If we can have a big round of applause. We also have a quick present for them. So, thanks. Thank you for the hard work. Yeah. And also for Anatoly. Thank you. No, wait, wait. Not okay. too far. <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Hard work. Indeed. Greatly appreciated. So, okay. So, I think we can move to the summary and the conclusions. Yeah, I think so. Okay. You're going first. Yeah, I can start. We started out with a single database, which was pretty great. Uh, maintaining a e single database is easy. Uh, risk is small. It's only a single database which can go down. Downside is if it goes down, we have to wait for it. And then applications, oh, developers start to complain about database not being up. So yeah, RTO was a bit high, but good thing is we didn't lose any data. Yep. 
Um, and it's definitely a valid use case. So we do use this even in production for certain work patterns. So the next case was asynchronous replica, which I think you said was your favorite. Or your... Well, it's kind of easy to maintain, right? Uh, you send some data, but I can immediately confirm to the application everything has been committed. And the replica eventually catches up. There's no big delay. The, the connection between the two is kind of weaker. So yeah, I would say it's my favorite. Okay. Uh, Downside is you might lose a little bit of data and you need to be able to handle it. So if the application thinks the data is committed, so you have you need to have some repair mechanism. Yes, you need to have recovery and checking uh, and you know work through your devs, what the consequences of that might be. And then there's my favorite, which is synch uh, simple, uh, synchronous replication. Um, and I think latency was a concern um, when we lost a data center in practice. If you have multiple data centers, you can make sure that if you lose one, you can carry on processing. Uh, but I love the fact that you can, even with synchronous replication, your queries might have apply lag. So they're at the data center, but they haven't been applied yet. So you can be behind. And also potentially you can just, just get ahead as we saw in the last demo. So I think the sync is the, the synchronous replica is my favorite. Yeah, but it's also by far the most expensive one because in this case we had only two copies. And then as you have noticed, uh, if the replica is down, the primary can't do any business as well. So actually you double the risk without any benefits. So if you want to have the benefits, you need to have at least three databases Please. because if one goes down, at least the other bag can be the synchronous replica. So you need more copies of your data which is more expensive, it's harder to maintain. We're dealing with more network traffic we are really depending on. Absolutely. So uh, it's also a little bit of a hassle. It's expensive. All of those copies, all the network traffic, making sure that everything's smooth. So we have but, synchronous but replica. I've, but I want to emphasize this. Yeah. Our PO is low and the RTO is low. We're not losing data and we're not losing time. Indeed, it was my favorite. Uh, but I love the fact you can go travel backwards and forwards. So, yeah, we've talked a little bit about rep read replica delay. Uh, yeah, maybe we should have talked a little bit more about it now, I think. Uh, possibly. Um, but, uh, yeah, the dependency on the network. I, I didn't want to... I mean, we gave the network charge guy quite a hard time. So I think we'll, we'll stop there. I think the last point we wanted to make us... This can, is, can I have a moment? Yeah. I think when it comes to communication with the replica, there are two things important. First thing is shipping the wall files from the primary to the replica, which is the replication lag. And when the replication lag is high, obviously you're missing data. But there's a second process important here, because even though all the files have arrived at the replica, it doesn't mean it's actually visible to the application, which is the apply lag. Yep. And it's a single process, so if you're spamming the replica with transactions, you might get all the transactions to the other side, but the lag will only be increasing with respect to the reading. It is a risk, indeed. It is a risk. Just be aware of it. Yeah. So the last point I have is that a lot of this was around highly available systems, making sure that you have, you're up all the time. Um, I have, you know, sometimes I have conversations and people think that this HA solutions are a replacement for physical backup. They do offer you a certain degree of backup, but you also need to protect traditionally with old-fashioned database backups, just in case you have a logical corruption of your database, uh, which would go through potentially your primary and replicas in near real time. So uh, yeah, don't forget your backups. That was the last point. Right, and I think as a database team, we are doing a better and better job. Uh, the first time we did this, it took us an hour. Previous yeah. time it took us 15 minutes and now we're actually finished in 30. 30, oh yeah. wow. So I'm okay. slightly shocked here, Okay, uh, but I'm afraid this is it. Okay, well, we got Q&A, and we had some fun Q&A uh, in Amsterdam, so I'm expecting a certain amount of heckling. <laughs> All right. So, All right, well, open for questions, then. I can speak in the podium. We only two channels, so if, you can, if we can turn this off. I'll okay, turn it off for a second? Yeah. One more. Oh. 
first one to me. Can I turn off? <laughs> so sorry, yeah, I mean that was amazing. Okay, so I, I'm gonna reuse what you've done because it's brilliant. But I wanted to say, what do you think about synchronous commit? Um, remote apply because I'm becoming a big fan of that. Yeah, you know. So you can get the answer. You have the mic. Um, I so one of the options with synchronous commit is you can run it with uh, waiting to it be applied uh, for your read replica. I mean that makes a lot of sense if you want to make sure your replica is up to date. But then you've got another potential point of lag uh, in your system. Um, so. So short answer, we really like it. Uh, it's the one we use most often. It's a, it's a, it's a way to be fairly sure the data is actually on the other side, but you're not waiting it until it's forced, forcefully written to disk. Yeah, because I'm, I'm finding that basically it's like slowing, slowing down at the source. It's actually a natural way to to ensure that we reduce RTO in a distributed scenario. And I'm actually seeing that. Uh, in any case, TPAs are more than enough, even in this case, what, what, based on, you know, what I see around, you know. So um, I just wanted to, you know, yeah, get your agree. point of view, you know. So it's like putting a, a, um, a light that controls the traffic in a, in a highway, preventing people from, you know, entering the highway or slowing them down, you know, at the source. That's... What well, we had makes me think. issues where the replica actually was not able to keep up with all the files we were throwing at it, but uh, that's a completely different presentation. We managed to do it. I'm not saying that's a good thing. Other questions? It's a great demonstration. All right. Thank okay. you all very much. Thank you so much. Hey, uh, really quickly, hold on for one second. So remember the, um, the things outside, but it's if anyone knows, or you are Sashin Fateh, maybe, uh, there's something lost and found at the registration desk. There's a lost and found. They've been trying to get to that person all day. So if you know them or you.